A very good evening to you all. Welcome to tonight's online Vespers session. Psalms 88 verse 9 says, My eye has wasted away because of affliction. I have called upon you every day, O Lord. I have spread out my hands to you. Psalms 86 verse 3 also says, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you I cry all day long. From these passages, we are reminded to always pray without ceasing. Always seek the Lord in everything that you do. Our speaker tonight is Pastor Stephen Monakin from Lebanon. He is no stranger to the Muscat church family. He served the Lord as a pastor in Lebanon and then as the president of the Gulf Field during which he has also served as the pastor of the church families in Oman. After returning to the U.S., he pastored the church in Columbus, Ohio, and is now serving the Lord at the Southern Adventist University in Tennessee as the student missions director. Pastor Monakin has always been available to shepherd and guide the church family in Oman, for which we praise the Lord. Our message is in song today are given to us by Grant Steinweg. Grant is a singer, pianist, and cellist who has just completed his bachelor's degree in music from Andrews University and has now been accepted by the San Francisco Conservatory Music to complete his master's degree in music with an emphasis on composition. He says that the purpose of his God-given gift and talent is to share the beauty of God's character in the music that he composes and the music that he writes and performs. A few months ago, Grant got in touch with the Muscat Church, introducing a person in Oman who has, he had been corresponding with. And we hope that when God's time is right, Grant can come and do a religious concert in Oman for God's glory. The first song he sings as our message in song is entitled The Ten Promises in His Own Composition. Now I will invite everyone to join in singing this opening hymn, which is uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Thank you. 
Sabbath, shall we pray? Our kind and loving Father, we come before your throne of mercy and grace. We want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath that you have given us. We want to thank you for protecting us throughout the, the week. You have been with us up to this day. May your name be praised. May your name be glorified. We want to thank you, Lord, for the program that is before us. Lord, be with each and every one of uh, those who are going to participate during, during this Sabbath. May you give them the word that comes from up above. In a special way, we want to pray for the Masca Church. We want to pray for each and every individual. Be with them, be with their families. Bless them in a special way, O oh Lord. Be with uh, each and every one of them and grant them your mercies. We want to thank you for all that you do for us on a daily basis. We want to thank you for the plans that you have for us in the future. Lord, as we come into the Sabbath, may you give us your Sabbath blessings and be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to take my place you'll no longer take my name in vain you'll rest in my sabbath grace i am the lord who brought you out of bondage i bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself just look to Calvary I want the very best for you why don't you just trust me you'll honor your father and mother that your life may be long will no longer stain your hand I am the Lord who brought you out of bondage I bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself just look to Calvary I want the very best for you why don't you just trust me? You'll not murder, nor steal, nor commit adultery. You will not bear false witness against your neighbor. You'll not covet your neighbor's things. I'll be your friend and forever faithful. out of bondage I bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself just look to Calvary I want the very best for you why don't you just trust me I am the Lord who brought you out of bondage I bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself. 
Just look to Calvary I want the very best for you very best for you why don't you just trust me trust me trust my words of Hi, Muscat Seventh-day Adventist Church. I hope and pray that you are all doing well. I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to be in order to be able to share God's Word with you on this beautiful Friday evening. Uh, for those who know me, I want to thank you for uh, inviting me once again, and uh, I look forward to hopefully one day seeing you uh, there again. And for those who do not know me, I just wanted to let you know that I'm Stephen Manukian, and I used to be the pastor of the Oman Church for a few years, and it was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had. And so I hope that one day I will be able to get to you as well and get to know you too. In the meantime, um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently at Southern Adventist University in Chattanooga, Tennessee, or Collegedale, Tennessee. And there I am the director of student missions, where I send student missionaries for long term to work abroad in different countries. And so it's a pleasure for me to be able to share the word of the Lord with you today. But before we do that, let's bow our heads and let's pray one more time. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the blessing of your word and for the blessing of being able to delve into your word. We invite you to pour your spirit on us so that the words that are spoken, Lord, will peace our hearts and we will come to know you, how beautiful and wonderful you are. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you at this time to open your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, and read the words of Peter to the uh, church. It says, 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 10, says, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. I remember when I finished my university in 1997, this is way back, I left home for a summer on a mission trip to the Philippines, where I was going to be part of a 1,000 missionary movement. And I remember when I got to, to the 1,000 missionary movement, there were several things that we did. For example, we were woken up about 4.30 in the morning, and we had to go jogging, and we had to do some uh, push-ups and uh, sit-ups and some calisthenics. And then... I remember that during the day we would go have devotionals and then we would go plant trees or, you know, work on some project that they had at on the campus of the 1000 Missionary Movement in uh, Balubat, uh, in Silang, Kaviri. Now, one of the uh, things that we did towards the end of the 1000 Missionary Movement training was the survival camp. For the survival camp, and this is a story, by the way, that I've shared with the church before. For the survival camp, what they did was they divided the the student missionaries or the missionaries into group uh, groups of about nine to ten, and there were about nine of us uh, in the, the nine groups of us. And I remember that I was assigned to take care of a be the leader of a group. Now, uh, we were supposed to go to the remote location and for three days without food or without any uh, way to provide for ourselves we were supposed to uh, survive in the jungle and I remember that one of the things that happened to me was um, 
uh, we were we, we began the, the the events and so the during this period of time we were going to do different events uh, for example running up the hill coming back down sliding in the mud and whoever finished first would get points and I remember that when I looked at my team it looked a very bit different than the other teams. The other teams had young Korean men that had just come from the military. They were well built, very strong, and very capable. And that's where me, I looked at my team. I had a few young men that were as skinny as I was, not very well built. I had a, I had a young man who had a very heavy stutter, and I had a young girl who could who would limp when she walked, so she had a hard time walking. And here we were against the facing the giants, trying to win these competitions. And so we did the first competition, and we got a few points for it. We did the second competition. We did we got a few points for for it, but we never I don't ever remember winning a single one of these competitions. However, as time passed by, I realized that if during all these competitions if we got enough points and we were able to get to the last competition which had the most number of points we would be able to win this competition and so the last comp the last uh, obstacle was for us to get bamboo and to light up a fire with just using bamboo and I remember my team getting together and there was this young man who stuttered who began to tell us what we needed to do because it seems like he knew what to do. Now I remember getting these two pieces of wood and we were beginning to rub and rub and rub together in order to get that little tiny spark. And believe it or not, eventually we were the first team that was able to get that little spark going and we were able to build a fire. And eventually what happened was that we got so many points as a result of that that we were able to win the competition. Now, if I looked at the other teams, there were eight other teams, nine other teams with strong young men who were very well built, who were very capable. They should have won the competition. And if I had looked at my group, there was no chance of being able to win this competition. But in the end, when we put our strengths together, and though we all had weaknesses, when we focused on what could we could do as a team, we were able to not only f finish, but also win. You see, it didn't matter that so-and-so was a huge guy, or so-and-so couldn't do such a thing. Because uh, when it came to teamwork, when we worked together, we were able to succeed. Um, Weaknesses become irrelevant because there were others in our team that had strengths in those areas. And so God intends for Muscat Church to function similarly as a family or as a unit. Not, or to, God wants Muscat Church to function as a family, not a dysfunctional family, but a healing family, growing, caring family. And God wants us to function as a body. Every person or every person's involvement in ministry at uh, the Muscat Church is vital for the family of body of believers to grow. Now, it is easy, very easy to lose sight of this. Yes, some of us do not have the gift of being maybe a public speaker. Maybe somebody else might not have the ability to carry a tune really, really well. Maybe somebody else might not have the gift for working with the children. But when we stop focusing on what we are not gifted at, and we start focusing on what we are gifted in, there is going to be a huge change in our churches. And uh, that allows us to work together as a team as a body to accomplish the greater goal of glorifying and praising God through our love and service towards each other and those of the community. Now let me illustrate this in a very personal way. Jill, my wife, those who know her, uh, is a big picture person. When she walks in the, uh, in the forest, she sees the whole forest, she sees the mountains, she sees the whole picture. Now, I am a very detailed person. 
So when I walk, I look down, I see the stones, I see the potholes, and when I look up at the trees, I see the branches and I see the individual leaves. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a big picture person, and there's nothing wrong with being a detailed person. They both have areas of strength and areas of weakness. Now, it's easy to, for me to see the weaknesses of Jill in this area, simply because it is my area of strength. Many times, while walking, Jill will trip over something. You know, she doesn't see the branch that is on the floor. She doesn't see the stone or the big rock that's in the middle of the way. And so she has, she could very potentially stumble. And uh, in fact, she has bruises and scars and even a broken toe as a result of that. Um, on the other hand, it is easy for my wife to see my mistakes. Uh, and weaknesses simply because it is her uh, her area of strength we sit down at a beautiful restaurant and while we're enjoying the meal I'm focusing on the little stain that's on the back seat uh, of, of the other person sitting in front of me or I notice the little stain on the table and you know it can potentially frustrate frustrate me instead of enjoying the overall beauty of the restaurant and of the place, I fixate on the small little issues. So Jill comments that overall, it seems like a great place, clean and beautiful. That's the way Jill sees it. While I focus on the little dot and it could potentially frustrate me. And she sometimes she really has to remind me to enjoy the inexperience, the, the beauty of the restaurant or the place that I'm in rather than let one spot spoil it all for me. Now, it is easy for us to criticize each other in this way. We don't have the weakness that the other person has. In fact, when we criticize each other about our different weaknesses, uh, our marriage doesn't get stronger. It gets weaker. Now, So if Jill and I, if I were supposed to c criticize Jill for her weaknesses, our marriage is not going to get any better. What would be more productive, however, would be if we used, Jill and I used our strengths to complement the other's weakness rather than criticize. Jill checks to see how things are going comprehensively, and I keep an eye on the details that she might miss out on. So we need someone to see if we are heading in the right direction and taking the beauty and someone to ask, you know, um, to look out for the rocks that might trip up our marriage. Both of us have our, our strengths and our weaknesses, but when we put them together, we end up with an even stronger and better marriage. And that is just one example of Jill and my, uh, and my differences that if used rightly would strengthen rather than weaken our marriage. So I wanna to propose to you today that our church is like that. We have strengths in areas that others in our church body have weaknesses. If we spend our time criticizing each other, we are going to end up even weaker. But if we instead we join together and use our strengths to complement another's weakness, we will come out even stronger. And so today many people have, many of us today, and including a lot of people that I know uh, here in the United States and friends of mine, have a backward idea of this. We have sayings that back up our upside down ideas about this. For example, birds of the same feather flock together. Has anybody of you heard this uh, terminology? Birds of the same feather flock together. But the truth is, strength through diversity is much stronger than unity through conformity. Let me say this again. Strength through diversity is much stronger than unity through conformity. It is also true that when there is great diversity, there is more of a possibility of division. And that's a fact. Um, but if we use our diversity to complement rather than tear apart, that same diversity can result in even greater strength, growth, and healing. The Bible is actually clear on this point. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, uh, it tells us that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. 
And so basically what it's saying is the Holy Spirit comes to the church and uh, looks at the church and looks at Brother Surendra or Brother Vishal or some other brother. And he says, Surendra, I'm going to give you this gift. And he comes to another brother and he says, I want to give you this gift. And when Brother Surendra and Brother Vishal work together, they complement one another. And or with through this one individual the whole profit from it and for example there's another text in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 and onward you will notice that different people have different gifts one might have words of wisdom and other might have great knowledge verse 9 of that same passage says some might have faith some might have healing Verse 10, working miracles, prophecy, discernment, different kinds of tongues, another interpretation of languages. And so the Holy Spirit gives us all these gifts so that we, we have them individually for the whole corporate body, to be used for the whole corporate body. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 tells us that another gift is the gift of the spiritual songs, singing and making music. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 mentions other gifts like teaching, preaching, evangelism, apostles, um, and other gifts found in Romans chapter 12 verses 7 to 8 include exhortation or basically encouraging one another, service, leadership, and mercy. And if you read Exodus chapter 31 verses 1 to 11, you will notice that God fills Uri, the son of Hur, with the Spirit of God in order to design artistic work for the sanctuary, carve wood, and do basically hands-on stuff. And that is a gift from the Spirit. And so when it comes to the church, different people doing different things, individually very different from the other, but they all are working for the profit of all to make the church a better place. And so God has equipped us with different gifts, and when we combine them and use them for building each other up, God will be glorified. There is not one person here today, or in Muscat today, that has given their life to God who does not have a spiritual gift from God. You might not have figured it out, but each one of us has been given, been given a gift from the Lord. Now you might say, how will I be able to figure it out? Well, here in the United States, and I'm sure you guys have this too, do tests. In fact, you can find some tests that you could do uh, about spiritual gifts that will tell you what your spiritual gift is. But the easiest way to find out what your spiritual gift is, simply get involved in ministry at church. And when you get involved in ministry at church, if you're enjoying the ministry that you're in, then that is your spiritual gift. For example, if you like inviting people to your house and feeding them and taking care of them, guess what your spiritual gift is? It's hospitality. If you love getting up and teaching, and guess what? Other people compliment you for that, for being a good teacher. Guess what? Your gift, spiritual gift, is teaching. If you are a good orator, you get up and speak, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and people enjoy when you speak, it tells you that you have the gift of preaching. And so, the best way to find out is do something in church, and if you're enjoying it, and if you are good at it, keep that in mind, and people are supporting you in that ministry, keep in mind that is the spiritual gift that you have. Now, it is easy for us to criticize each other, as I said, it is the easiest thing in the world to see someone else's mistakes. Just for a moment, I want you to stop and think of someone in the church who annoys you, who irritates you, who gets under your skin. Maybe they have a weakness and are a malicious gossip. Sometimes maybe they don't wash their hands properly. I don't know what their problem is. Or maybe their style of parenting really, really upsets you. Maybe they don't sing in tune and it drives you crazy when they're singing. Maybe their hair style disturbs your sense of fashion. I don't know. Whatever it is, however, and however silly it may be, or how, however little it may be, I now want you to think of something that God has gifted them with. However that annoying person may be, I want you to think of what their spiritual gift or strength may be, or talent may be. What of some of their strengths that maybe you don't have? Maybe they seem rude and blunt, but you can be happy for the gift of honesty that they have that maybe you might not have. 
Maybe they can, can't sing in tune, but they do sing with their whole heart and can really, really worship God when they, when they sing. So I want to challenge you today, every time you think something negative about someone else in the church, always balance it with something positive. Give people the benefit of the doubt, especially in our church body, especially in your homes where you know people well. We all make mistakes. Give others the grace that you yourself would like to have as well. Basically, I challenge you to do unto others as you would like them to do to you, and as well, to think on others as you would like to be thought of. Yes, yes, I know Pastor Stephen makes mistakes, but he does have a great wife. Well, well why is all this so important? Why am I sharing this with you? Well, there are a few reasons. And I believe it is important that we keep this in mind. Number one, when we are united, when we work together for the kingdom and for the glory of God, it brings growth to the church and uh, maturity. It brings repair. It brings faith development. And these are all intimately tied to relationships. So growth repair or healing, maturity, and faith development are all intimately tied to relationships. People need people to achieve wholeness in a fractured, in a fractured world. Um, and so I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today. I want you to figure out what your strength is, and I want you to use your strength to complement or to be to come alongside the weakness of another brother and sister in the church in order to help one another grow, in order to help one another heal, in order to mature and to develop your faith as you interact with one another. And so today, I want to conclude. I don't want to keep this message very long. I want to share with you a song that I listened to a little while back by Casting Crowns. I want you to listen to the lyrics of this song. It says, It's crowded in worship today as she slips in trying to fade into the faces. The girl's teasing laughter is carrying further than they know, further than they know. But if we are the body... Why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing them? There is a way. There is a way. A traveler is far away from home. He sheds his coat and quietly sinks into the back row. The weight of their judgmental glances tells him that he has his chances are better out on the road. And then he goes back on to the chorus. But if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing them? There is a way, there is a way. And so, in conclusion, I want to challenge you. Let's love one another as Christ loved us. Let's look for the strength and think on others. And we would like... To be thought as we would like to be thought of. Let's put our heart into doing what God has created us to do. And let's put aside anything that would keep us from those things so that we can grow in faith, so that we can heal our wounds, and so we can help unbelievers see that, whoa, the church that we belong to, the Muscat Seventh-day Adventist church that we belong to, is a church that actually loves. It's a church that actually works together. It's a church that is united and a church that has a relationship with one another, but above all, a relationship with God. And so I'm going to invite you today to use your talents, to use your spiritual gifts for the kingdom growth, for the church growth, and for the growth of every single individual in the church. 
Thank you all for your time and for listening. I hope and pray that this message will bless you and encourage you to use your talents for his kingdom and for his glory. Take care and God bless. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for this time that we could have together in your word. I'm going to invite you, Lord, to be with our members, that you fill them with your spirit, and that the gifts that you've given them be used for your kingdom, for your glory, and to honor you. 
that they might be united and people will come to see Jesus in a different way. Bless the uh, Muscat Church and the Oman Church. May your face shine upon them. May you be gracious to them. And may you unite them in a way that they would, can never be united except for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon them. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.